Welcome back to the channel guys, hope everyone's doing well. This is Hermes, Zero Fox 3D's new mesh core repeater enclosure for rack hardware. Look at this, this is just absolutely excellent. So, so well designed here, you've got room for four 18650 batteries, you've got integrated on off switch. So basically this is compatible with rack 4630 boards, like you can use the, the small one like this, or you can use the, the whiz block, and you've got an N type connector as well. So this really does solve a lot of problems here. You've got a huge amount of battery capacity available with these 18650s. You've got the N type connector as well, so you can just basically screw an antenna straight onto this it's got lots of mounting holes as well on the back for different brackets um, which you can use for pole mounting or also you can um, cable tie this to to poles as well these water seals are nicely designed as well chris tells me that he's really tested this um, in the shower <laughs> and all sorts of stuff like that so yeah it's a solid bit of kit keeps your repeater hardware away from the elements and yeah basically you can mount this any way you like so what i'm going to do today is i'm going to actually mount this on on the, uh, one of my masks. So I'm going to use a Yagi with this. So what you can do with this, obviously, is use like a, an antenna screwed straight onto this. Um, and then you'd kind of like put, use a pole mount to, to sort of clamp this on. He's got some pictures on his website. So, so effectively, the antenna is clamped to the mast and the box just sort of like hangs off the side of it. It's super strong. It can you know, deal with that. So you can see here what I've got inside is my, obviously my 18650s, 3400 milliamp hours, I believe those are, and my rack repeater, which I've already set up. Obviously, you can see there's the solar input there, which hasn't got anything plugged into. So what I've gone and done is got another one of these front panels and basically stuck a solar panel to it. So what we're going to do here is we are going to route that wire through, there's already holes in there. So when this is all sealed, obviously, these are sort of out of the elements because they're facing down. There's a lot of like outdoor Wi-Fi access points that use this kind of principle where basically these bottom bits are still exposed, but they're not because obviously water can't really travel upwards. So quite interesting. So what I'm basically going to do is just route this wire through this little hole under here like so and we're just going to connect that solar panel there and then we can just put this front panel on and then i'll just put a little bit of tape around there so that it obviously looks a bit nicer and that is going to be a really simple way of getting a solar repeater set up so these little panels you can get on amazon they're great for the summer and the spring in the winter things fall a little bit short with the little panels like this but remember we've got a huge amount of capacity here so this could run probably for several months you know maybe more on this sort of capacity with this this little rack board so it could actually mean that this could just run all year round on a small panel like this but we'll we'll test it out and see what happens this is going up on the mast um, long term anyway so let's get all this screwed up and we can get to installing it So whenever I set up repeaters, I always use my little RF meter, which basically handles up to one watt of power. Um, and you can see whether the repeater is actually kicking out the right amount of power, which is what we're gonna do now. So I'm just gonna briefly log into this repeater um, and we'll see. And you actually have to turn it on first, of course. So there's a little power switch in there. So you can just click that on. And we should probably see an advert pop up on this one when, when it transmits, but it might be a little while before it does it. Anyway, so we're gonna try and log in into the repeater using my T-Deck here. And we're gonna see, there you go, 145, we logged in, 146, 145 milliwatts coming out of there. So that's that's a nice healthy output. And you can obviously see that it's working because um, we can just you know issue commands here on the T-Deck like advert, and you'll see this, there you go, 145 milliwatts. So that's all good, it's all working. It's all good for um, you know installing. Got a message just coming through here, so <laughs> there we go. Right, so this is the situation. So I've got the antenna connected. This one is the Paradar 12 and a half, I believe, DB gain Yagi. Swear by these. So if you're having trouble connecting to like a distant repeater, these things just work so well. So I really recommend these. Link link in the description again to that. Um, I've basically gone round the connections with self amalgamating tape to stop water getting in it just it's just a really good way of securing standard way standard practice for doing these sort of antennas so the repeater has actually got the bracket on the back now so that's the pole mount bracket um, and then what i'm going to use basically to fix that is a couple of big solid tie wraps which are around here somewhere one of these a couple of these so that will keep it nice and secure and then it's going up there with the other one 
that is the McGill 9dBi again, and it's super works so well. And it, that's on a rack uh, solar enclosure. Um, but the Yagi, basically, I want it to kind of point this way um, to try and enhance like a connection that way. These Omnis are really good in all directions, but it, it sometimes it just needs like a couple of couple of dB more. Um, on the Yagi. Also I can rotate this pole as well so it means I can rotate the Yagi around and, and sort of search for new stations that way as well. So let's get cracking. So Yagi's on and the repeater as well. It's on with the other one there as well, the Omni. And this is all nice, everything's secure, everything's good. So I'm just going to trim these off and we're good to put it up. It's up, <laughs> roughly pointing towards the um, the cabin, which is a really good repeater site. And we can see on here, I've actually got in on one hop. So normally it's two. So that is a good sign. Right, so let's do a bit of a deep dive and see what we can find out about the situation. So I'm going to go to the MeshCore website.co.uk, MeshCore.co.uk, and we can basically go to the apps section here and go down to MeshCore web client. And what this allows you to do is use your computer, like a Chrome browser, you know, you can run the app in it effectively. So just by going to this domain up here, you can then access uh, the, the app as if it's like running on your computer, which is pretty cool. Okay, so we're in, we're connected, and we can see here, this is the, uh, the, the repeater that we've just basically installed. So if we just tap on that, and then log in. I've already filled in the password and everything, so that's already done. We can get into the admin panel of this repeater, and you can see here, it's actually, it actually says three days. It's been up and running three days, 20 hours. <laughs> this is because I'm actually filming this video uh, a few days later now, so mainly because I wanted to sort of check what the solar panel was doing and everything else. But yeah, you can see the battery's still 90% here, so you know, and it's 4.12, which is probably more like, I don't know, probably more like 95%, but these things do actually kind of read different. And I don't think it was fully charged anyway. So I'm confident that solar panel's doing doing something to keep this keep this voltage up pretty high. Um, but time will tell, obviously. Um, so from here, what we can do is we can go into the settings and you can see all the settings of the repeater. Some of them aren't filled in because it's quite good on, on a bandwidth so it won't automatically try and purge all the information from the repeater and you can just basically tap these little um, icons to get that information that's why they're not filled in so you can do things like advert from here you can set your advert interval your position you can sync the clock which i've already done so i'm not going to do that again admin password you can change guest password obviously this is what i'm interested in the neighbors so neighbors are basically um, zero hop stations that your repeater um, has heard. So if we tap on this here, you'll see here the map pops up and all of these stations here. So if we zoom in on this one, this one is basically the repeater we've put up, Harford Yagi. Um, and these ones around it are, are my other repeaters. So they obviously they're quite near. And then we've got one in the town, which is also mine, um, which is obviously heard there so these are these are the ones that it's hearing directly i would have thought it would hear more directly but maybe not because it's a yogi and it's pointing basically this way um and i know there's some other stations around this area here so maybe that yogi yeah that, that yogi is probably just yeah it's doing its job it's working in the directional way so this station here we can see that's wgc omni so we're basically linking to him over there um shout out to you mate um over there in, in Welling. If we click this little um button here, that's basically like your your signal strengths. So you can see here signal to noise ratio. Um on the ones that are really close, it's yeah, in the in the in the positive uh signs here. So you can see plus six, plus five, plus five point seven five. Um <clears throat> really good signals. This one not so great. It's going over quite a distance. It's not unusual to see minus figures in this um, in this SNR. In fact, most signals will be minus SNR. Uh, they'll show a minus SNR, um, a negative SNR value because it's lower. It just works down in such low noise um, or high noise, sort of. So, so anyway, you can see here this really long distance one. This is actually the cabin, and this is what I actually wanted to you know connect to. This is what I wanted to try and enhance my link directly to. Um, the actual signal here, signal to noise ratio, is is astoundingly good. Um, so that could be credit to the fact that the the uh, the VART cabin masts um, 
it's very high and i'm going to be doing a video on that um soon you, you'll see how <laughs> it's on high ground and it's up about 30 meters so it's it's a very good repeater so if you're in any of these areas in fact pretty much i'd say probably in that area you're probably going to pick that up if you put up some kind of decent antenna um it's got some crazy coverage but yeah so you can see it's it's done the job and that is what i wanted to kind of achieve there so even though that signal does say 14 hours ago um i'm not reading too much into that at the moment i'll, I'll have a look and see um you know later on because i think something strange something strange is going on with there maybe the clock's out uh, who knows i don't know but um we'll see what happens with that um but yeah that's good and we can see, I mean, obviously I was saying this is a few days sort of later now. There's a huge amount of stations coming in now. Um, so we've got Harpenden, Yagi. We've got some Hemel Hempstead stations in there as well. Um, shout out to you, Martin. Um, and yeah, like it's just getting pretty, pretty interesting. Some of these stations around the St Albans Way. Um, obviously, Mark's in around Hoddesdon. There's the cabin link. I'm not sure exactly what that is there's a new one here caveland client so it's never a better time to get into mesh core guys um it really is growing pretty rapidly and you can see here there's loads of <laughs> loads I've, i should vet these messages before i put them on the uh put them in the video but yeah you can start to see obviously lots is lots is going on so that is that i'm super happy with this repeater as it stands and we'll see how things go on the repeater itself is actually the repeater enclosure itself is available on zero fox's website and i will um and i'll be putting a link in the description to that you obviously need rack hardware to go in it and everything else so yeah basically there's numerous places you can you can sort of buy that even direct as well um so yeah hope you've enjoyed this one guys and i will catch you next time